the Lord said to me that he says, listen, today when you, when you speak, he goes, break off that slumbering spirit. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna deal with that. And so, um, anyway, so there's another scripture here that through the years, many have really mocked this one or put it down or, or said, I'm not listening to this. In Hebrews 13, 17, it says here, obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them continually recognizing their authority over you. Even saying it, I have agent in my stomach, you know, because, because you know what? It, for so long, this scripture or, or the, the, the behavior in churches was wrong. It was abusive, right? So listen, now God is saying there's a renewal on this and God wants you to awaken and yield and surrender to this, not in a dicta dictatorship kind of a thing or unhealthy thing. Obey your spiritual leaders. Submit to them continually, recognizing their authority over you, for they are constantly keeping watch over your soul. We have to answer to God as leaders, right? And guarding your spiritual welfare as men who have to render an account of their trust. Do your part to let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning, for that would not be profitable to you. Hello? So that's important. It really is. But so many times, and again, now I'm going to get into 5783. I just have to say this. People will come and say, the Lord told me, and, and just automatically want you to agree with them when you're saying the Lord, but he didn't tell me. And so you're coming, and we're there just trying to guide you, and then you get mad because we're not agreeing with you, or else then you go ahead and do it. I had someone say to me, why didn't you force me not to do it? Well, I can't force you not to do it. I mean, listen, that's your choice. We can guide you. The Lord gave me, he said a long time ago, he said, I am the deliverer, you're the midwife. You just help and you just guide and you help them birth things, but I'm the one who brings the deliverance. Amen. So I can guide you, I can coach you, but it's up to you. I can't force you. I'm not going to do that. But so this is really important that we understand that. And we submit to our leadership. If they say no, we, we don't do it. I don't care if I think so much that God is saying, uh, don't do that, I mean, or do something. If, if Chuck Pierce says, I don't think you should do it, we don't do it. No question about it. We're not doing it. I submit to my leadership. We all have to do that. So listen, that's really important for us in this season. It's always been, but we can't be playing around any longer. We really need to be in alignment more than ever. Amen? All right, so God has called all of us to be watchmen. You're a watchman over your family. You're a watchman, you heard last night with Matt, over your life. You're a Matt, you can be a governmental watchman, a watchman over the land. I mean, that's what they, how they used watchmen at the time. Uh, you know, in the, it was an agricultural uh, system. And so what they would do is have guys that were, or women that would watch to make sure no predator came in or no one came to steal their harvest. You see, we're not going to allow the enemy steal our harvest. We're going to watch because every time, how many times have you moved forward? As you start to move forward, something happens, and it causes you to go three steps back. Well, that's that Midianite spirit that we're going to talk about. But see, don't let the enemy steal your harvest. You grab hold of that thing and say, uh-uh, this is mine. This is my inheritance, and you're not taking it. See, we have to watch, and we have to, we have to hold on to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us because he's given us an assignment, and the enemy doesn't want you to fulfill your assignment. He, he just wants you to be stuck and stagnant. Go to church 42 years and nothing happened. Go to church 15 times a week and nothing happened. That's not God. He's the spirit of the living God within us. We're supernatural beings. And when, when we're praying, we need to expect that breakthrough. Now, sometimes it takes time, but God is accelerating things. He really is. So last year was 5782. It was the year of the house, right? And so God was dealing with our house individually, with the church. You know, he's dealing with us to get things right. You know, we've heard about intimacy, rebuilding our altar with the Lord and, and that time of intimacy. If you're not doing it, you need to do it. We can't. We, everybody has to have that. It's, it's a privilege to have that, that time with the Lord. First Peter 4, 17 says, judgment begins in the house of the Lord. It's going to be with us. We can't point our fingers and then act the same way behind closed doors because God will call you out. So the pandemic really revealed a lot of where we were at. And listen, this isn't condemning. 
I like when God highlights where we're at. Because there was a lot of fear in the church and panic, right? There was a lot of dissension. There was a lot of anger. Well, we just have to look over that and say, okay, Lord, forgive me where I've been out of alignment. They may have judged. You may have been angry. I mean, listen, we were all getting angry over this political thing. I mean, we all had to repent. At least I had to repent for my thoughts about certain things. And so, you know, but I just want to make it right. But were you battling with extreme fear? If, that, if you were battling with that, God wants to set you free. Because, listen, Psalm 91, it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord that you're my God, my strength, and my refuge. And I won't, I, won't tr- I won't fear. I'm going to trust you. But if you're having a battle in that area, I had to, here's what I would do, because I struggled so much with fear. I would get all the scriptures and meditate and speak that loud and declare it over me day and night. And then the word, you become so one with the word. And even though your knees may be knocking, see, it doesn't mean that you don't have those emotions or feelings, but I'm not going to allow that to dictate what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. See, and we have to really, you know, war over that. We have to war over our harvest. Amen. So in 5783 that we're going to be entering into is the Hebraic year of Gamel. And um, um, Marissa had it up before. And it resembles a foot and a person walking in the direction of the left. And it represents the abundance and riches of God running after us. Gamel, like, you know, you heard uh, um, the camels are coming. That's a picture of camels and it's prosperity. So God is saying, so expects prosperity, spirit, soul, and body. But, you know, I looked up in the Hebrew concordance, which I thought was pretty amazing, the, in 5783 is a number, and I looked it up in the Hebrew concordance, and it means to expose, to lay bare, to be without clothing, to, without clothing, and to uncover. Now, I'm telling you, this is going to be a year of exposure and uncovering. Unlike, and now, I've heard prophets talk about it, but when I looked it up and I saw that, I was flipped out by that, that, oh my gosh, we, God, listen, God's going to uncover stuff, so let me tell you something, rather than you get before the Lord, rather than someone else expose your stuff if you haven't done it, but God is going to be exposing stuff in the church and in the government, and, um, you know, but I just thought that was so interesting, so it is going to be a year of exposure, blessing, and cursing, and so, um, Let's see here. Gimel, I told you that. And it's derived from a Hebrew word, gimel. I don't know if that's how we say it. And listen, it means justified payment. It's a picture of a camel. It has several meanings, to nourish, to bridge between the material world and the reality of God. And, And it also means justified payment. Payback. We heard that last night. It's a year of retribution. God makes things right. It's benefit, recompense, dealing, it's provision, renewal, revive, reestablish. And you know, one of the other words for 5783 is, is watch, to watch. So you see where, you know, what I love about this, when I started to study the Hebraic uh, roots and everything, a lot of times even the prophets, as we're prophesying, like we plan, how long ago did we plan this, the Watchman Conference a while ago? I didn't know that the Gimel word meant, one of the words meant to watch. You know, so we're in alignment with what God is saying, what he's doing. I just love that. 